Yes, my name is Durwood Zelke. I'm the president of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development. And what is your institution? We focus on the fast half of climate mitigation. So climate change is a problem of time and temperature. It's too hot and we've left ourselves too little time to turn down the warming. CO2 or carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels is putting the world on a slow boil. That's half of the climate problem. But the other half is a blowtorch, methane, which is cooking us immediately. And so we have to find a way to turn down methane and the other non-CO2 short-lived super climate pollutants. Those include not just methane, but also the HFC hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants that we have taken out with the Montreal Protocol. Also black carbon soot, one of the worst air pollutants that you could ever suffer, and tropospheric ozone, which is ground level smog. So when you take out that fast 50%, you can cut the rate of warming in half in the near term. So you can think of it as running a sprint for the next 10 to 20 years to turn the temperature down fast using the non-CO2 race. So, how, so take it back a step. Where does the methane come from? And how do you turn it off? How do you take it out of the air? So methane comes from three primary sources. The fossil fuel industry. So so-called natural gas is fossil gas, primarily methane. You also have uh, gas coming from coal beds. So gas is what kills the canary in the coal mine. So you need to eliminate that for, for safety reasons as well as to protect the climate. It also comes from the waste sector. So when we throw away food, put it into a landfill or any other organic material that's stored without oxygen, it turns into methane. Then you also have the agricultural sector. So ruminants, cows and sheep, they, when they eat and digest their food, they produce methane. Their manure lagoons also produce methane. Rice paddies produce methane. So that's the anthropogenic side. That's what humans are causing. There's another side. Maybe 40% of all methane comes from natural sources. So that's the wetlands of the world, especially in the tropics. As the world warms, those wetlands warm up and they give up more methane. That's rising very fast. Methane is going up skyrocketing. It went up more last year than any year in the history of the world. So that's very important. And then as we start to melt the permafrost in the circumpolar north, what we used to think of as permanent frost, that starts to release ancient stores of methane, carbon dioxide or CO2, and N2O. And so that starts a wicked cascade that makes it very hard to keep the climate safe. Now, the reason we need speed, so I'll, I'll come back to what we can do, but, but let me also just say a little more that we need to move extraordinarily quickly because what's happening with the current warming, which is, as everyone knows, 1.2 degrees Celsius, on the way within a decade to 1.5. The battle here at this meeting at COP27 is whether we can keep 1.5 as our main target, keep 1.5 alive, keep 1.5 within sight, this is the islands who first put 1.5 together back in the Copenhagen Accord. They said, we want to study to see if we can keep the world at 1.5 because that might keep us safe from sea level rise. So that 1.5 is incredibly important because once we hit 1.5, the self-reinforcing feedbacks of the world start to take over. And so beyond what the humans have put into the system, the earth starts to warm itself. That is incredibly dangerous. That'll push us past a series of 
six irreversible tipping points that are lurking just beyond 1.5. Those are irreversible, potentially catastrophic, leading us to hothouse earth where much of the world will simply be too hot for humans and, and much of uh, the animal world to live. So what can we do? What can we do? So we can speed up the non-CO2. You have to do, think of this as two races. You've got to run the, the fossil fuel race to move to clean energy. Think of that as a marathon to 2050 when we reach zero emissions at 2050. But the short-lived non-CO2, methane and other super pollutants, think of that as a sprint. We have to win that sprint in the next 10 to 20 years to turn down temperature now to slow down the feedbacks, avoid the tipping points. So what do we do? Well, we have the Global Methane Pledge from last year, COP26 in Glasgow. Now we have more than 120 countries that have joined that to cut anthropogenic methane by 30% by 2030, below the 2020 baseline. That's a really good start. It's not the maximum. The maximum is we could do at least 45%, and we could do most of that at low or no cost. Cutting methane is saving a fuel that the world is desperate to provide to Europe to replace the natural gas that Putin has now decided will not go to Europe. And so if you plug your leaks, stop your methane, you have more fuel in the short term. In the long term, we have to move to clean energy. We all know that. So the pledge is really important, but it's a pledge. And pledges are not always kept. So it's important to design a global methane agreement that's inspired by the Montreal Protocol. That's the treaty that solved the first great threat to the global atmosphere, where we were destroying stratospheric ozone. That same treaty, the Montreal Protocol, has done more to avoid warming than any other agreement, including the UNFCCC. By the end of the century, the Montreal Protocol will have avoided two and a half degrees Celsius. That's about 1.5 degrees from stopping the damaging chemicals from destroying stratospheric ozone. The other one degree Celsius is because by saving stratospheric ozone, we stop the damage to forest and other carbon sinks. That's a whole degree Celsius that we've saved. So that adds together to two and a half degrees of avoided warming. If not for the Montreal Protocol, we would have lost the climate fight already. So when you see that magnificent treaty, which is a sectoral agreement, went after one piece of the climate problem, the fluorinated gases, primarily refrigerants in the cooling sector. We need that as the inspiration for a global methane agreement. Can we do that? Yes. Uh, we can negotiate as we did the Montreal Protocol in nine months. Now, if you did a global methane agreement, you'd want three sectors that you went after, the fossil fuel sector, you'd want to then do a separate protocol on waste. Finally, the agricultural part. You want to be very careful with your farmers. That's usually done by shifting subsidies in Europe and the US and many other countries. Farmers are so important. We've got to respect the need to feed the world, which is harder and harder given climate damage. Look at uh, Pakistan, they lose two seasons of planting because of the floods. Okay, so COP27 needs to do a couple of things. The first thing they need to do is broaden the number of countries that have joined the Global Methane Pledge. Every country of the world, including China, including India, should be in the Global Methane Pledge. Good for them at home, and it's good for the world at large. Second, the world has got to add up some money, okay? Now, look to Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados, one of the great climate leaders. She is the champion for using the International Monetary Fund to put together $500 billion a year 
for the next 20 years to mitigate climate change and to provide resilience and adaptation. Look to see when she gives her speech tomorrow, does she begin to focus on methane as well? So putting this together with islands, with Africa, one of the most vulnerable regions, putting money together with a pledge, and then signaling an interest in a global methane agreement that's mandatory. Well, first of all, you need to move this to the head of state level. This is a climate emergency. This is the solution in the near term to that emergency. It belongs at the G20. It belongs at the level of the heads of state of the major emitters. There are 20 countries of the world that emit 80% of all the climate pollution. They're the ones and they're heads of state. President Xi, Prime Minister Modi, President Biden, uh, Mackie Saul in uh, Senegal, uh, President Kagame in Rwanda. Okay, these leaders, President Panuelo in the Federated States of Mac Micronesia, they need to come together seriously to say, we are the head of state group dedicated to solving the global climate emergency. We know that we need to start with methane and we need to tell our ministers we want a global methane agreement and we want it in a year.